morning, River Oaks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, that's cool. Good morning. One more time. Good morning, River Oaks. Good morning. Buenos dias. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good too, myself. Thank you. My name is Luis Montillo, and I uh, got the privilege to lead our Espanol service at 1 o'clock every Sunday in our Goshen uh, building. So uh, if you don't know me, i uh, love to been serving River Oaks for over 13 years, and I love this church, and I love you all. And most important, I love Jesus. Amen. And, and the question is, what, what am I learning from God? What am I learning from God? And let me give you a little bit about, about my story. Uh, I was born in a Christian home. And at the age of 16, uh, actually, I learned everything I needed to know. <laughs> so yeah, I, I knew everything at 16. And uh, for the next seven years, um, I lived like a person who knew it all until I got married. <laughs> and after uh, a marriage, three kids, a dog, a cat, a mortgage, and a ministry, I have learned that I really don't know that much. <laughs> Of anything. <laughs> so the more I learn that I don't know, the more I learn to follow the one who knows it all. And his name is Jesus. Can we give him applause? <laughs> so what am I learning from God? And to be honest with you, I'm still learning what Pastor Matthews, in the office we, we, we call him uh, Matthews, but... Uh, <laughs> That is Scott Matthews. Um, he taught a couple weeks ago that we need to surrender. And I'm still learning how to surrender to God. Usually by every Friday, I'm like, man, I'm doing really good surrendering to God. Then comes Saturday. And I'm like, oh, I need a little, a little bit of work. And last week, uh, Pastor Nesbitt taught that we need to rely on God's guidance. And I'm still learning that myself. I wish I could tell you, God, I got it all down. Uh, but that is Tuesday morning What I find out that I really don't know. I need his guidance. I don't know about you, but I do. So, Pastor Luis, what is God teaching you? What is God teaching you? And I'll tell you what God has been teaching me. My faith will be tested. My faith will be tested. Your faith will be tested. Because life is a class that is always in session, and every season has a test. James, one of my favorite books in the Bible, you know, James, uh, half-brother of Jesus, James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, Consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is what? Tested. Your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. River Oaks, life is a class that is always in session. In every season has a test. Your faith will be tested in many ways. As a matter of fact, over the course of years, over the course of decades, it's going to get pounded. Your faith will get pounded by unpleasant circumstances in your life, in your family, in your country, in your church. Your faith will get pounded by personal, marital, family, and financial frustrations and failures. Your faith will get pounded by unanswered prayers that can lead you to despair or to doubt the goodness of God, even his own existence. Your faith will get pounded by problems, suffering, injustices in your life, in the life of others. 
It will get pounded by bad testimonies of people who claim to be Christians. And I could be one of them. Your faith will get pounded by ethical, moral, and spiritual failures of Christian people and leaders. It will get pounded by when, when you see people that don't go to church, don't get their ties, seem to be happier than you are. Your faith will get pounded by seasons, in, by seasons in your life where you get so overwhelmed by everything that you don't have time to process or heal or recover from anything. Read the story of Job. Your faith will get pounded by your own sinful nature. Who fights daily to rule your mind, your desires, your actions, and your decisions. But you know what? Endurance in the Christian faith only grows and matures when it is tested. And if you're going to make it to the end and be able to say anything close to what the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, when his life was about to end, he said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. Then you're going to develop, you're going to have to develop a strong and deep faith. Because as your faith is tested, your endurance has an opportunity to grow and mature. But if you're not careful, the testing of your faith can also lead to its fracture. And today I want to mention, and I'm not, look, this is nothing new to most of you. But I want to mention two, out of many, two fundamental ways to help you endure the testing of your faith and instead grow in it. Because the question is not if it's going to get tested, but when. And most of you guys know that. Number one, when your faith is being tested, you need to what? Keep developing your relationship with God. You need to keep going. You might not feel like it, but you need to keep developing your relationship with Jesus Christ, with God. River Oaks, even in the midst of our doubts and disappointments, we have to stay close to God. How, Pastor? By reading his word, by praying, by staying in close connection with his people. Because if we don't, we will slip in significant ways and lose the edge of our faith. And Satan will do all he can to leverage that little or big separation. That's what Paul warned us about in 2 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 through 9. It says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy. Stay alert. All the time, 24-7. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong. And what? In your faith. You see, for committed followers of Christ, the slope is slippery for running off the right path. River Oaks, prayer increases your dependence on God, Bible reading feeds your knowledge of God, and church attendance helps you develop habits of consistency and obedience to his word. River Oaks, do not, do not let the difficulties you face or your lack of encouragement or your many occupations be excuses for not praying, for not reading, for not attending church. Instead, as difficulties, as occupations, as opportunities arise, we must make a great effort to read, pray, and be here with the people of God. Church, many times, 
You're just going to have to go through the motions. Many times you're just going to have to go through the motion of praying. I don't want to pray. I don't feel anything. Until you feel the emotion of praising. Sometimes you're going to have to just go through the motions of reading your Bible. Until you feel the emotion of listening God speak to you. Many times you're just going to have to go through the motion of just coming to church. Coming to church. I don't feel like coming, but I'm here. Until you get the emotion of joy and community in God's people. River Oaks praying, reading your Bible, and church attendance. It's not going to change everything. Sometimes it doesn't even change anything in your life. But it will change your soul so you can endure your life with joy, purpose, and hope. I love what Hebrews teaches us in chapter 10, verse 23 through 25. It says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect, ne neglect what? Our meeting together. As some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the days of his return is drawing near. Number two. Keep what? Believing. believing. Keep believing. Keep developing your relationship with Jesus and keep believing. I'm struck by the power of believing faith in Hebrews chapter 11. We're not going to read it all. I suggest you do it at home. Well, but what a powerful chapter. And I just want to read some pieces of Hebrews chapter 11. I want, to, I want to start with verses 1 through 3. And it says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for will actually happen. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earn a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see did not come from anything that, that can be seen. In verse 6, uh, Hebrews 11, 6, says, and it is impossible to please God without what? Faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those, with, those who sincerely seek him. And then let's go to verse 32 through 40. Same chapter, Hebrews 11. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouth of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weaknesses was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to fight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. But others were what? Tortured. Refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were dear at and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prisons. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half. And others will, were killed with a sore. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this, wor for this world. Wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in, in the ground. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. Wow. All that faith, and then see it. You see? They all die believing. 
but some never saw in this life the fruit of their enduring faith. And so, every once in a while, against the feelings, against the evidence that says otherwise, I need to reaffirm, I still believe. I still believe. I still believe there is a God. I still believe that this God, he's sovereign and good. And I don't always understand what he did or does what he did or does. And I don't always like what he did or does. And I don't always know why he allows certain things to happen. To happen. And I don't know why some of my very noble prayers and honorable prayers that I do don't get answered. And I don't know why there's so much evil in the world. But I still believe. I still believe. I believe there's a God and he sent his son Jesus to die for me in this mess. And someday he will come back to clean it up. And because of my faith in Jesus Christ, one day I will live in heaven for all eternity where all my questions and all my doubts will be answered or they'll just disappear. And I know that frequently I fail at this thing called Christian living. Oh, man, I do. But every day I need to get up and try. I need to get up and try. Every day I need to get up and try to, to be the best follower of Jesus Christ who does live differently. Amen. Who does bless and bring hope to this world. And I still believe that God, with God's help, I can become more like Jesus. I can grow in my faith and I can live with his, for his purposes and for his glory. With his help. River Oaks, every follower of Jesus will have their faith tested. In big ways, small ways, and many ways. No exceptions. And from our perspective, there is no guarantee that we, that we will make it. No guarantee. Some of us here today will probably... Abandon our relationship with Christ before we die. And the part that scares me the most is that I could be one of them. Your faith will be tested. Maybe it will be tested by some tragedy in your life or someone you love. And it will hurt because you know God did not stop it. Or maybe it will be tested by an eloquent, well-prepared, but ungodly college professor who presents a case that there is no God. Or maybe it will be tested as you watch some Christians, Christian leaders, and even churches do some stupid, immoral, unethical, sinful things. And some, some of them you looked up to and trusted. Or maybe it will be tested by all the worries, distractions, and opportunities of wealth, power, and recognition that our country offers. These are faith-testing, faith-crunching blows. But they are also our opportunities for your endurance to grow stronger and your faith deeper, you decide. So, Pastor Luis, what is God teaching you? At your faith, my faith will be tested. Because life is, is a class that is always in session. 
And every season has a test. And the question I need to, to answer is, am I going to let the test of my faith fortify my faith so I can grow and mature in it? Or I'm going to let the test destroy my faith? That's the question we all need to answer. I'm going to take you to Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through, through 5. It says we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop what? Endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us. Because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. And let's go back to James chapter 1 verse 12. It says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, after what? After you endure patient, patiently the test, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. I get excited for that. I get excited for that. So I want to end with four comments. If you're, if you're young in your faith, your Christian faith, and it is still exciting, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm pretty excited about my Christian faith. But you're still excited because your faith has not been tested yet. I'm serving you a notice. It will be. <laughs> it will be. Get ready. How? By developing your walk with God. Study his word. Pray regularly. Join a community group if you have not done so already. So you're not walking alone and keep believing. Number two. If you have an older faith. You've been a Christian for over five, ten years. Thirty, forty years. Who knows? But in the quietness of your heart and your mind, you're developing doubts. You're developing doubts. And you're drifting a little bit. Get serious about walking with God. Get serious and keep developing your walk with God. Keep studying the word of God. Keep praying. Keep attending and serving your church. Keep believing. Number three. If your faith is badly beaten up, I mean, horrible stories. I, I, you know, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's taking a beating. I'm sorry, but get back up. You need to get back up. Repent of any sin. Who no, knows? But repent and follow Jesus for the rest of us. You'll be glad you did. One day, you'll be glad you did it. And number four, if you have not invited Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, do it today. Do it today. It will be your best decision ever, and eternity will confirm it. You can take that to the bank. So, church, when your faith is tested, Keep developing your relationship with God. Don't do the opposite. You need to keep, sometimes, like I said, going through the motion. And God will present himself. He will reveal his power through your obedience and your faithfulness. You keep developing your relationship with God, and you keep believing in his power, his goodness, his mercy. So, River Oaks, when things get darker... You need to go deeper. River Oaks, as you, have, as you have more problems, you need more prayer. River Oaks, when you don't know what to do, God should not be the last person you talk to. He must be the first person you talk to. Right. 
We're rogues. When troubles and doubt come, run to God, not away from God. Can I get an amen? amen. Can, you get, can we get up and let's pray? Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for your awesome and beautiful word. A word that just ministers to our heart. A word that gives us hope, guidance, direction. God, help us be a church that we daily learn how to surrender to you all those things that are out of our control. That we daily just seek for your guidance. And when our faith is tested, I pray that you give us the courage through the power of your Holy Spirit that dwells in the life of each believer to continue developing our relationship with you and to continue to believe for your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen.